Okay, hello and welcome to this short video. We are happy and proud that we just published version 160 of the Flip Fluids add-on for Blender. And by the way, this is now available at a particularly low price because it is Cyber Week 2022. Yeah, so version 160 is coming with lots of bug fixes and some new features. And one of those features I want to highlight today is our new preset asset library. But first, let me say that this is a first test phase. So there could still be errors like race or other unexpected events. And of course, we ask you to send us a message with the topics that stand out to you. Yeah. And here we go. So inside Blender, of course, we just need to install the add-on before we can do anything else. So the way we are doing it is going to edit preferences. Then, uh, yes, go to add-ons and search for the Flip Fluids add-on. Make sure the latest version has been installed, of course. And then go all the way down here till you find the install preset scene library panel. Yes, you will find some notes when clicking on this button here. And you will see that there are two options. Uh, you can use um, existing preset library folder or you can install presets from a zip file that you can now download from the marketplace where you have bought our add-on from. Okay, so you need this zip file, of course. Then you need to select a folder, a location where you are going to insert the assets library. My folder is this here. You can click this folder icon here and then you can find um, the folder where you are going to install the file into. And the next thing, the second step is to choose the zip file itself. So click on this button and then go to the folder where this is inside. For me it's here. And then click install preset scene. Suck. And then you will see status installed. You can uh, check this, go to file path here and take a look to this field here. You see asset libraries, Flip Fluids add-on presets version 1, 2, 0 and the path where it has been installed to. So make sure to save the preferences and close this window. And now, ladies and gentlemen, you will find the new assets here. Make sure that the assets panel is enabled here and then you will find this thing here. Yes, I recommend to scale this bigger, the thumbnails to large as examples so you can see everything we have uh, done here because there are some information for you. As example, um, let's take one of the scenes here like the fire water and you will see there are texts inside the thumbnails. As example, what uh, kind of asset you are seeing here. So this is a domain box that means you can push this, pull it here to the uh, 3D viewport and you can add some fluid into this and you can add a volume force feed into this and now it's ready for simulation. By the way, in the folder we have um, installed this, you will find now the folder with the blend files inside. So if you would like to see the blend file in its original, you just can open it here and make your experiments there. And if you would like just to use some elements of these blend files, you can now use these assets here. Okay, so take a look to the texts here because there are more information than just domain, fluid object, force feed or whatever. You also see that this domain object is using attributes. And what attributes it's using, you can see on the upper left here. Yeah, I know it's really small and maybe hard to read, but this is an important hint for you because this well and speed, these are shorts for velocity and speed. And that means that you need to use a shader that uses the same attributes here. So if you're going to use this domain object and you will use a shader from another scene, you will see that this shader does not have any attributes here. What means using this shader will not show you all effects the simulator just simulated. It's the same thing with uh, viscosity as example, or let's say you have bubbles and uh, foam inside, or you have moving obstacles, all that information are here. And another great thing with these assets is that we have 
add tags to them. Tags means, let's have a look to the right side, that all of these icons here have some more information like volume, for the text moving, or here it's a fluid object, and yeah, this is a domain object. And if you select it all here, and you would like to, let's say, seal all domains, you can search for domain, and now you will find all domain objects. Or let's say you would like to see everything that has to do with something to drink, type in drink, and you will find all that has to do with drinks. Or let's say attributes. You will find everything that has attributes, or maybe shader, or maybe slime, or maybe bubbles, whatever. So this can be very helpful if you're using or if you're going to search for something special. Okay, so that's all about the functionality of this asset browser here. Uh, of course, we're going to make it better. We want to make it grow. So, yes, let's see what the future brings to you. Okay, now let's come to the program, to the new code in our simulation or in the helper add-on, because that's not all. As example, we now need to save this file. So I'm going to save this as assets test. And yes, yeah, so if I would hit back now, the, the simulator tells us there must be only one domain object in the blend file because it detects that there are new, uh, that there are two domain objects. So you need to delete one of these. So I'm going to delete this one and I'm using the new delete domain operator. I'll tell you in a short why I'm doing this this way. Okay, so have a look to what we have here. Okay. There's um, some cache from the first bake, from the first test. You can ignore it. Let me place it here. Okay, now let me decrease the resolution here and hit bake. The thing is now, if we would delete this domain object, let's do it, all the other things will be here. So we have now the uh, simulated mesh here and let's undo this. And if I would go to use the um, delete domain operator, this will be a more clean deleting. So um, this will delete all data that was inside. So we always recommend to use this new delete domain object when using um, new domain objects in your scene or using the assets browser. Okay, but let's undo this also. What is if we have that simulated and we are going to add a domain object from the same scene? Yes, of course, it will duplicate your simulation. This is because the uh, presets are set to, to append with reuse data enabled. So let's delete this again. You can also select both and hit the delete domain. Uh, don't worry, the simulated mesh is not away. Just move the timeline here. And now let's change this to Append. And now if you're going to add these objects, the fluid data is not copied. copied. Very great. So the next question might be, what is if we do not want to use this for, but another object, but with the same settings the four has. We have added a new copy settings to selected operator. The way it is working now is this. Um, if you select the new object and then select the original object and you would click the copy settings selected, then uh, the add-on tells you that there's no other force feed object. So the add-on knows that you are going to copy the force field settings, but your new object isn't any object for the simulator actually. I think in the future we could think about if the add-on detects what we are going to do, but the way it works now is you just need to make this thing a force feed object too, and then select the four, and then click the copy settings to select it. And now as you can see, the new object has all the simulation data the four has. And now let's see if this is going to work. Let's move this here and hit bake and now you can see that this icosphere is exactly working like the number was working here because it has the same settings here and now if i'm going to render this you will see uh yeah it's just right because our fluid surface does not have any shader and as i told you if you're going to use any shader that has no attribute data you can just pull it here you will see it is, it is red, like the red wine shader tells us, but there's no special effect. 
but the firewater domain has special effects because it's using velocity and speed attribute data so that means we need to use a shader that matches to that domain so let's go to use this shader and now as you can see the firewater is exactly working like expected okay so take a look to all our presets here um, yes as I told you we are going to add more in the future uh, we hope that this uh, new assets thing is working for you that you like it and yeah the new version of our add-on is available at all marketplaces now so let us know if you like it leave a comment for us below this video thank you for watching and goodbye